Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mister here to bring you something new, something epic But going back to what you love the most Another Minecraft 360 degree video This time, as you see right here, it's about a map of Star Wars With the release of The Force Awakens, many people started looking into all the Star Wars movies and with the next one, the rough one uh, coming up I'm right now I don't really remember the, the exact date that's going to be the next movie many people really look into it and becomes, become a little confused with the numbering uh, episode 1, episode 2 and when the movies came out so right now I'm going to give you a small synopsis of the movies uh, uh, when they came out. The original trilogy are episode 4 New Hope that came out in 1967 uh, actually 19, 1977 sorry about that. Episode 5 The Empire Strike Back uh, that came out in 1980. Episode 6 The Return of the Jedi that came out in 1983. As you see, they come out uh, three years apart. What people get confused is the very first movie of the Star Wars was actually Episode 4. They did this on purpose because Episode 1, 2, and 3 uh, actually became the prequels and became the backstory of who was going to become Darth Vader, the main villain of the first three movies. Episode 1 it's called Phantom Menace that came out on 1999 that's as you notice 16 years after episode 6. Episode 2 Attack of the Clones that came out 2002 and episode 3 Revenge of the Sith that came out on 2005. All these three movies really brought back all the fandom that the first three movies created. The Phantom Menace it's regarded um, as I believe as one of the wars on the trilogy and let's not forget so, some of the tie-ins that came about some comic book stories, some bird graphic novels, TV series, cartoon series. Right now uh, on these days I'm watching Star Wars Rebels. The events of this series happened after episode 3, but I believe before episode 4. That it's, it's about 10 to uh, 15 years around that before episode 4, chronologically. But it still brings back a lot of emotion because the series is about some of the Jedi's that survived the massacre that happened on episode 3. Uh, if you haven't seen episode 3 of the Star Wars movies, what happened there is most of the Jedi's were massacred and very very few survived. In Star Wars Rebels we see some of the ones that survived, very few, but not all of them that got together, some of them got together with some rebels, some re rebel factions and really start to fight the good fight. That's something that really bothered me. Some, uh, some of the Jedi's had the power to inspire people, to really put, bring hope to many many people. But for example, in the first three movies you realize that Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, went to seclusion as well as Yoda. Why didn't really get together, really work with all the rebel factions and all the people? They would have brought so much hope. They didn't really have to teach them about the force, they just really needed to show them that they have some backup, some really good people that I really believe in them. That could have worked wonders. But no, they have to went, uh, go into seclusion. 
I admit that they really didn't want Darth Vader to find them or the Emperor, which who is the leader of all the Sith, which is the, if you didn't know, is the pretty much the polar opposite of the Jedi's. The same thing happened on The Force Awakens. You realize that Luke Skywalker, I believe, went into seclusion. Sorry, I haven't seen the movie yet. Sorry, in The Force Awakens, you get to see Luke Skywalker, but I think he pretty much did the same thing as Obi Wan Kenobi did in the in the other movies. Why didn't he join the good fight? That's something that is still bothering me right now, but. Maybe it will clear up a little bit um, when I watch The Force Awakens. So, some people think that the next movie that was announced for Star Wars, the Rogue One, was going to be Episode 8, which is sequentially the one that goes after The Force Awakens. But technically, the Rogue One is going to be part of an, an anthology. But uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a series of movies that tied up together some loose ends. This movie, The Rogue One, as I read, is going to be a connection between what happened on episode 3 and episode 4. Maybe it's going to have some tie-ins with the um, cartoon series um, Star Wars Rebels, but so far, I'm not really sure. When the movies end, they don't fully end on the screen. What they, what happens is they continue in graphic novels and in comic book series. I, as when I used to frequent some comic book stores, I will see that there were some comic book series of Star Wars. Most of them, they didn't really have to do with Darth Vader and some of the main characters they have to do with some stories with, that were parallel to all that and also I remember after the Revenge of the Seed ended I remember um, looking into some of the Star Wars graphic novels um, that a friend of mine had what I realized is that all the events that happened in The Force Awakens were already talked about on graphic novels. When they show the new villain, I actually knew who he was. I only read like for 5 minutes and with only that I already knew who the main villain of The Force Awakens was. Maybe most of you by now know the fate of Han Solo. Too bad uh, that happened. But I don't think it's going to end there. Because I also heard that they're going to make another anthology. This time it's going to be the backstory of Han Solo. It's going to be pretty cool. But maybe they're not going to deal a lot of with the Jedi thing because I remember that the first time that Han Solo in episode 4 started to listen about the the force and all that stuff when Obi-Wan Kenobi was trying to train Luke it looked like he didn't really know much about it much about the force so it's safe to say that Obi-Wan Kenobi was pretty much the maybe the first Jedi that Han Solo will uh, will come to meet but who knows um, the Star Wars universe stores so many secrets that I'm not really going to assume anything it's going to be more fun just to wait for the other movies and I really hope they do a better job than they did in the Phantom Menace because I think the best part of the Phantom Menace was when they did the race across the desert. That was pretty good. And to think that we are rooting for a kid that eventually was going to become their Vader. Did the Jedi on that movie who recruited 
Anakin Skywalker. I don't remember the Jedi's name right now. I wonder if he had known who Anakin Skywalker was going to become. I wonder, would have he killed the kid at that moment? Or I wonder if he would have still tried to recruit him and tried to work even more deeply with him so he wouldn't turn to the dark side. But the reason he actually turned to the dark side was because the Emperor lied to him. They said that the dark side had actually the power to bring people back to the dead. That, I think that's how it went and he really wanted that because he had visions in which his girlfriend slash wife, I'm not really sure they were married, she would die at childbirth, he didn't want that. So he pretty much sold his soul just for something that wasn't even real. Despicable. But then again, more things will come on the next Star Wars movies. And I hope you enjoy them. And I hope you also enjoy this video. The look at the Star Wars and the history Star Wars that I gave you. If you want tour of more maps of Minecraft, just leave the suggestions in the comments below. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. God bless you and good night.